Hi, everyone, and welcome to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. Wendy has spent the last two years helping women with various stages of endometriosis to heal naturally after putting her condition into remission. After her own healing success from stage four endometriosis and adenomyosis, she's inspired to heal others, and her goal is to help some of the 175 million women know that there is another way other than painkillers, drugs, or surgery. This is the place to be for real talk with real people for real results so you can learn how to heal your endometriosis naturally. Please note that the opinions expressed in this program may represent options but are not a substitute for proper medical care. Before starting any new healthcare program, we recommend you consult with a health professional. Hey everyone, as always, I hope that this podcast and video find you well. Now, um, today I'm going to be talking about drinking your food. Now, um, when one embarks on this first step of healing your endometriosis naturally, it's normally because there's been some kind of wake up call, some kind of something that's happened uh, that has made you sort of sit up and take stock. Some deep shift in awareness to shake up one's perception about an old belief system. And in this case, invariably, it's in relation to healthcare and the medical field. The majority of us are conditioned by very well meaning parents, extended family members, education system, colleagues, authority figures about what health and or healthy means. And, you know, what and what was ill health protocols and what they are. We are very fortunate here in the UK to have the National Health Service, but sadly it has got caught up in processes with the wrong goals. We have incredible nurses and doctors and medical personnel working in a system that focuses purely on the surface level of any potential issues that show up in a body. They're a byproduct of their extensive training, which has not been updated for decades. And the focus is on treatment of the symptoms and not the root underlying causes. This is something I've talked about numerous times, but it's really well worth repeating. The weight and influence, of course, of the pharmaceutical industry engages and encourages a surface level approach to much more deep systemic diseases and conditions as they're showing. As someone who gave up her body and her power to a well-oiled medical machine for decades, I speak from experience, I was stubborn, I was determined, I was righteous in my certainty of what I thought I needed to put out my responsibility to complete strangers in white coats. Yet I knew no other alternative. Nothing else had ever even been suggested to me as an option. Perhaps by the older or wiser woman that would have been in a tribe had we still lived in those cultural setups to this day and age. I was a woman at a certain age and stage and was placed on a conveyor belt to be pigeonholed due to my age and gender. What I did not know was I was immersed in the medical field that was ultimately that I was ultimately responsible for my body and health, even though I went along that conveyor belt. Nobody else was responsible for my body and health, but I gave out that power. I wish I'd had a wiser, older, compassionate elder from whom I could get, uh, who I could trust to get guidance from, to expand my limited beliefs and awarenesses. My contracted and fragile state reinforced my fear to stay small and seek external validation of any decision that I was about to make and any thoughts and feelings that I had. I had an impatience to get it right and to get it right fast. A severe lack of understanding of the physical processes and how healing works. And of course, the emotions carefully under wraps and kept tightly under control, yet bursting at the seams and the tension showing up in my body. The other day I heard from a prominent school teacher who teaches a primary school level about how several of her pupils were being were showing signs of sadness and upset and emotional outbursts and were being prescribed antidepressants and sedatives, all at a very young tender age. It actually hurt my heart for them. The medications and the medical personnel and the parents, I am sure, are all very well meaning again in their decisions. Yet the child's message is one to distance themselves from their feelings and their emotions and to numb them out. This idea of suppression and numbing reveals itself later in physical symptoms that show up in the body later on in life. I should know, 
I tried terribly to be satisfied with the numbing of an external um, force to deaden the, the hurt and the emotional pain that I experienced in my late teens. As I approach my mid fifties, I see the sadness that energetic focus created and forced a further detachment from normal healthy responses to unhealthy and abnormal environments that I grew up in. My body became the barometer to reveal what was happening deep inside my subconscious. And that's when food became a feared consumption. It became this substance that on some level, I kind of knew logically I needed to put into my mouth, into my body, for I could not live without it. Yet my appetite was weak for solid foods that my digestive system could not break down or absorb. What I did not know then was that when my body was or is was in a state of fight or flight or freeze or fold or any chronic long term type of stress, one of the main organ systems in the body, the digestive system, functions very poorly, if at all. The digestive system is not concerned with eating or consumption of food when it's feeding for its life. All bodily focus is on survival at its core. Hormones, cortisol and adrenaline are pumped out to ensure that the body is alert and ready to run. Unable to rest or relax, the body cannot digest. There's a great saying, relax and rest, the body can digest. In this day and age, that's really hard to do without conscious awareness. And worse, when you for, when a, any form of appetite resurfaces, it's focused on this quick sugar releasing foods to support the dopamine or endorphin release, AKA a burst of happiness and emotional release from the emotional pain. I was lucky though, even though I was quoted as borderline anorexic in my twenties, some other part of me recognized that even though I resisted solid food and found it hard to digest, well, maybe I could just drink my food. I believe this mentality to have this has been a saving grace for me. After my sixth and last surgery many years ago now for endometriosis, I would wake up drained, pained and lacking an appetite. Not really that surprising given what an ordeal my body had been put through. I retrained from my bed in nutritional therapy and learned the importance of a minimum consumption of calories required each day for us all, especially for women, about 2000 calories. We need to have a minimum of that for our body to function effectively. It was clear that I was not eating enough and worse, what I did eat was filled with additives and artificial sugars. My awareness was expanding and I recognized that I had to take full responsibility of my own health. It was not appropriate to blame a stranger for the treatments making the condition worse. There was no fairy godmother going to come along and magic me back to health. The buck stopped with me. I had to parent myself, I had to sit up and recognize, ultimately, you are what you eat, or actually, you are what you digest after you eat. I had to start to record what food was being placed in my mouth to start the challenging journey of increasing my awareness. It has been said that awareness is half the battle. Once a light has been shown onto a behavior, a situation, or a person, or a habit, you can't unsee it. It is now visible and the next step forward is dependent on one's attitude towards yourself and your body. It was tough to admit that I had not been taking care of my body and myself as I should. But ultimately, I was responsible that I needed to pay more attention to what was coming in my body, going on my body and around my body. That expansion of awareness would literally save my life and ultimately turn my health around for good. But I had to overcome the very strong relationship, weird relationship almost I had with food. The increased awareness would highlight tensions that would be evident at the family meal times growing up. An association had been created subconsciously that food equaled stress and tension. I had to journal and explore these associations and turn them around 180 degrees. As I said, that was when I decided to approach my food differently decided to drink my food to start with. Not only did it make it easier to actually digest my food, liquid food is an easier pre-digested state already, but my body thanked me, literally. My body was now starting to get the essential nutrients, minerals, amino acids, vitamins that it needed to enhance and strengthen and hurry the healing process. 
I could not expect to eat wheat filled croissants, cakes and poor quality additive filled foods and pour in poison and expect it to somehow magically heal. It was fighting the poisons. It could not heal when it was in that state. If you are what you eat and you are what you digest, then I recognize I needed to increase my awareness of the quality of food I ate. I aimed for the 90-10 rule. 90% of the time I ate or drank the best quality food that I could afford. 10% was the more sugary substances at carbs, which are hard to avoid. This way, my body had a realistic goal and I could parent my parts and set myself up for long-term integration and success. When I mentioned drinking your food to family, some thought me mad. When mentioning drinking your food to clients, I sense their initial sadness, like this is going to deprive them somehow and that they'll be sad not to be able to eat solid food. But of course, this is just a way in to eating and drinking your food in a way that's going to be beneficial for the healing process to begin. When I considered this initially, I thought it would be a bad idea, unrealistic, unsustainable, and even undesirable. But as someone who has entered her seventh year of zero pain and zero symptoms of endometriosis, adenomyosis, as well as chronic fatigue syndrome no more, mitochondrial dysfunction no more, no more thyroid issues, etc., all in remission, I can vouch for its fun and effectiveness and sustainability. As I repeat regularly, your body is a self-healing organism. It is incredible, really, when you think about it, how any human body has put up with all the preservatives and additives, e-numbers and alien GMO genetically modified foods, yet it still manages to function somehow. Yet at some point, the body could not support its functions effectively due to the overload of poisons and inflammatory foods. Then when you load poisonous products filled with SLSs, parabens, inflammatory or phytoestrogenic ingredients, more fuel is poured onto the body's fire. Then you've got to filter in the elements of what's in our environments and in the property. And then when you add in the final two Ps, past and people, the emotional distress from compressed childhood mishaps, mistreatments and trauma or any abuse, it all creates further tension on an already tightly wound and tinder kegged body of symptoms that start to overflow and show their evidence. I love to repeat this because it's important. The body is always wanting to heal itself. Our sole responsibility is to take care of what comes in on and around it. Not to beat ourselves up and chastise and criticize ourselves, but our role is to parent and protect our body physically, emotionally, and spiritually. It is not the responsibility of anybody else. When I first realized this, it made me feel sad. I felt a little lost, a bit down and despairing almost. All of the Hollywood and Disneyland films, the fantasy, folklore, and fairy tales were wiped away in an instant. The cold, hard reality of my body's health started with me and ended with me. No one else. However, I wanted to fast track that healing and bypass the aversion or lack of interest in food. I wanted to make eating easy. I wanted to make it a non-event. I wanted it to be fun even. This is where drinking my food helped me to have a new relationship with food. I would learn to make fabulously healthy soups filled with tasty, nutritious vegetables. I was no cook, but I would make big batches, blend them all together and have that for a few days and then freeze the rest to have at another time. Sometimes I would pour into a flask and be able to eat easily and cheaply on the go. I started to experiment with green juices and explore juicing vegetables like organic cucumber and carrots with an apple thrown in for sweetness. I made sure I did this at least two to three times a week and notice how my body literally craved them after a while. I would wake up craving juices and soups. Never thought that was possible. I experimented with blending in the Nutribullet, the juices with an avocado or protein powder and noticed how my skin started to glow and my energy level soared. And a strange thing happened. You see, when you eat, and often the dopamine and serotonin in the intestines are released, these are feel-good hormones, I started to feel better. 
more positive outlooks, greater ability and capacity to deal with stress occurred as well. My energy levels rose higher and small but significant changes started to occur in my monthly cycles and in my overall physical health. You see the green juices were, were supporting my liver to gently detoxify any poisons or prescription drugs or pharmaceuticals out of my body. And they also improved the regularity of bowel movements so that any waste food, et cetera, was expelled out more quickly. But the strangest shift was my attitude to food. I started to have a new relationship with it, as I mentioned. Drinking my food allowed me to separate from the past associations of stress surrounding solid food, and I found myself integrating more healthy solid food as a result. Now, I also like to have fun with food, healthy fun with healthy food, paying close attention to how your body responds to what is consuming and how it likes it, recognizing the bloating gas, etc. Your body has some issue with that food and how you feel emotionally after eating it. Little and often is the key. So little changes start to make big changes. I have recently fully updated and revised my cookbook to include all of my favorite foods that are wheat free, soy free and dairy free, meaning less inflammatory stress on the body. But I didn't want it to be fun free. I wanted to include many of the best soups, shakes and of course, puddings. Depending on your pain levels and where you are in your journey, there are ideas for all tastes, types and moods. But what is super important is that you parent yourself to ensure that you're thinking ahead and ensure to plan for regular consumption of food, whether you drink it or eat it. Don't get up and run around and out the house, out the door to go to work on an empty stomach with zero thought of what you're going to eat for lunch or dinner or snacks. Do set yourself up for success. You see, you can literally turn your body, health and life around by making the smallest of changes. And the most impactful is by starting to drink your food. This will change your relationship with food forever and open you up to amazing energy, great clarity and fantastic health that perhaps has evaded you up until now. Because I understand how challenging it can be to make these changes, yet I want to inspire you to make this drinking your food change, my fully revised and updated cookbook is being released this Friday in a few days time and I'm going to be giving it to you for 50% off for only 24 hours. Now, I make nothing on this book. That's how important it is to me for you to have it. So make sure to grab your paperback copy from Amazon while stocks last. It will be released on Friday. And for those who leave their review, I've also got a special thank you gift for you too. Just email my team your copy of your review and we'll send you a thank you gift by return. When I finished by sharing the tale of two women, one felt it was the doctor's fault. She kept being ill and had 26 surgeries, but refused to consider increasing her awareness about food, produce, products, people, and past. She still suffers to this day. The other woman decided to step out on blind faith, to leave the medical machine, step off the conveyor belt. She made incy wincy daily changes. It took her about 10 to 12 weeks, but slowly she started to notice the tiniest of changes as her body started to respond. She noticed six months later, her skin looked smoother and softer. Her hair was thicker and had more gloss and she had more energy. Her monthly cycles that had always been erratic, heavy and prolonged became shorter and lighter month on month. Her sleep improved, her energy levels soared, and finally, she felt she was back in the driving seat of her body. She paid attention to the ingredients on the back of every piece of processed food she bought. She became curious about the food's origins and became friendly with the local farmers and butchers and made a conscious effort to buy the freshest, most organic foods she could get. She set realistic goals and recognized that no stranger knew her body better than herself. She just had to develop the confidence to listen to it. She did, and after 33 years of deep crippling pain, she has embraced the past seven years symptom-free, pain-free, and gone on to help other women be released from pain too. The second woman is me. The second woman is the many I have worked with. The second woman is you, 
if you take that leap of faith. Make sure to grab your copy of the paperback book that releases this Friday. But until then, keep you number one and to your health. Thanks for listening to Heal Endometriosis Naturally with Wendy K. Laidlaw. And I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and rate us. If you're interested in learning more, you can download your top five jumpstart tips at healendometriosisnaturally.com and jump on the VIP email list. Remember to keep you number one. The world needs a healthy you.